So, hi everybody, nice to meet you on this uh, webinar. So, my name is Farah Jimili. I'm going to uh, talk about AI for cybersecurity. So, first of all, let me introduce myself. So, uh, I had an engineer and Master of Science and PhD diploma in computer science. Uh, I have extensive experience as a researcher in artificial intelligence, intrusion detection, big data analytics, and cloud computing. I'm actually I'm currently an assistant professor at the uh, University of SUS uh, and also a member of project management office. Uh, I had participated into um, many international uh, projects, uh, H2020, Erasmus, etc. And I used to be head of the Department of Computer Science for three uh, years. So the agenda of this presentation, uh, are, uh, first of all, I'm going to introduce the cybersecurity context. Uh, second, I'm going to talk about today's challenges and issues. The, the third uh, part is uh, the research pillars. And uh, I'm going to talk about comparative study, uh, my contribution and uh, conclusion and perspectives. So let me introduce uh, the cybersecurity context. So nowadays we are going through the most important communication technologies. Among these technologies, social media, SMS text messaging, email marketing, direct email, blogging, uh, voice calling, video chat, video marketing, uh, live web chat, virtual reality. So these, all these technologies produce 2.5 exabytes of data each day and this number is only accelerating with the growth of the internet of things so uh, besides the increasing use of connected technologies in industry 4.0 context makes the smart manufacturing system vulnerable to cyber uh, risks among these technologies the mobile technologies the machine to machine technologies the 3d printing the advanced robotics big data analytics uh, the RFID technologies, Internet of Things. So uh, all these uh, technologies are, um, are increasing in the context of Industry 4.0. And cybersecurity experts said that damages related to cyber attacks is projected to hit $8 trillion in uh, 2020, in, in the end, at the end in 2000 of uh, 2023, and will grow to $10.5 trillion by two, uh, 2025. So let's have a look at 2020's biggest attacks and how much did they cost. So uh, Equifax, uh, Yahoo, Uber, and WannaCry have lost uh, $100 million due to data breaches and cyber attacks. Among these attacks, denial of service, distributed denial of services, network scans, port scans, and botnet. What we should note here is that for, uh, 81% 80, um, of victims did not have a system to self-detect intrusions. In 2022, the average time to identify a breach is 207 days, and the average time to contain it is 70 days, totaling uh, um, 277 uh, day breach life cycle. Um, and cybersecurity experts say that cyber attacks happen uh, once every 39 seconds in 2023. And global AI and cybersecurity market is predicted to grow at 35% during the forecast period with the market size reaching $31.2 billion by 2024. So here I'm going to introduce the industrial AI ecosystem, which has been uh, created recently. It defines a sequential thinking strategy for developing transformative AI systems for industry. It is based on four main pillars. The first pillar is uh, it's about the impact. It has, it has to do with the impact of the AI uh, system. Uh, it, it is systematic impact, rapid uh, impact, or sustainable uh, impact. The second pillar is the transformative system methodologies, which include the development tools, the systemic machine learning methodology, and the commercial platforms and tools. The third pillar is enabling technologies. I'm going to explain these technologies in the next slide. Uh, this, in, this, is in, this includes data technology, analytics technology, platform technology, and operating uh, operations technology. And the fourth pillar of the AI uh, industrial ecosystem is uh, data quality, operational regimes, machine to machine variation, expert knowledge, and cybersecurity. So let me explain uh, the um, data technologies. Uh, uh, is, it's, 
the, it's a technology that enables successful acquisition of data. The analytics technologies convert data from critical components into useful information. The platform technologies include the hardware architecture for manufacturing data storage analysis and feedback. And the operation technologies refer to a series of decision made and actions taken based on the information extracted from data. So there are, there are many real world examples of AI in cybersecurity. The most known one, uh, ones are Silence, which is a software that uses machine learning to detect and prevent malwares from penetrating network through endpoints. The AEG, uh, Automatic Exploit Generation, is a solution that can find and determine whether the bug is exploitable or not. If found, the bot autonomously secures vulnerabilities. The AI2 is an artificial intelligence platform that predicts cyber attacks by continuously learning input from human experts in real time. And the IBM Western for IoT is a network-wide analytics platform that are able to predict in real time failures and recommend maintenance based on connected network components condition. So based on these problem problematics, uh, here are our uh, today issues or challenges. So the first issue is how to collect and store massive data with different sizes and types. This issue has to do with data collection, storage, and pre-processing. The second question is how to process streaming and massive data. This issue has to do with streaming, big data fusion, and analytics. The third question is how to achieve accurate cyber attacks detection. This question has to do with artificial intelligence and especially uh, machine learning, deep learning, and generative uh, learning. And the, th the fourth issue is how to provide uh, an appropriate intrusion response. This uh, issue has to do with decision making. So let me introduce my research, my four research pillars. The first pillar is cybersecurity uh, with its uh, concepts and mechanisms. The second pillar is cloud computing, uh, which is uh, which, uh, with its uh, uh, storage services. Third pillar is big data uh, analytics tools. And the, the, the main pillar of my research is artificial intelligence, uh, ML technique and decision making uh, technique. So let me uh, first introduce the cybersecurity pillar. Uh, cybersecurity is the application of technologies, processes, and controls to protect systems, networks, programs, devices, and data from cyber attacks. It aims to reduce the risk of cyber attacks and protect against the unauthorized exploitation of systems, networks, and technologies. So uh, cyber uh, security technologies, um, we have three main security technologies, the firewall and VPN, the access control and the intrusion detection. In my research, I uh, especially focus, I'm especially focusing on intrusion detection. So what is an intrusion detection system? It is a device or software application that monitors a network for malicious activity or policy violations. And an IDS can be characterized with six uh, main characteristics. The first characteristic is the detection approach, which can be anomaly-based or signature-based. The second um, characteristic uh, has to do with the protected system. It can be host-based, network-based, or hybrid. Uh, next characteristic is the structure, which can be centralized or distributed based on multi-agent systems. Uh, the data source is also a characteristic of an IDS. It can be an audit trail, network packet, or system state analysis. The behavior of an IDS it can be passive IDS or active, which means generate alarms and uh, acting. Um, and the analysis timing, which, uh, which can be uh, on the fly or interval-based um, uh, detection. So uh, now let's um, move to the second pillar, which is cloud computing. Cloud computing is used to uh, store uh, the data. So cloud computing is a, an on-demand on access via the internet to shared computing resources, applications, servers, data stores, development tools, networking capabilities, and more, hosted at a remote data center managed by a cloud services provider. So it has different delivery models, infrastructure as a service, uh, platform as a service, software as a service, Service. It can be public, private, community, or hybrid. It, it offers different services, processing and storage uh, services, which we are using here in our contribution for cybersecurity. Uh, we also uh, use big data. Previously, a uh, researcher has uh, spoken about big data uh, with uh, generative AI. So big data is a very important pillar. Uh, big data, uh, it's what's big data? It's when data can be processed or stored on a single machine or a single program, then it is called big data. Uh, it aims to process uh, big data. It is characterized with uh, four uh, main characteristics. Uh, it 
four uh, main Vs. The first V is uh, the volume. It has to do with the scale of the data. The second V is variety. It has to do with the forms of the data. The, the third V is the velocity. It has to do with the analysis of the uh, data flow. And the fourth V, the fourth main V is the velocity. And it has to do with the uncertainty, how to treat uncertainty of data. So all these uh, characteristics or all these um, features are uh, guaranteed or are assured by uh, big data tools. And now let me uh, move to the next, to the final pillar of my uh, research, which is artificial intelligence. So first of all, let me introduce what is artificial intelligence. So it is the ability of a system such as the computer, hardware, software, or other devices to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Artificial intelligence includes machine learning, include natural language processing, includes speech, speech to text or text to speech, includes expert systems, planning, scheduling, and optimizations, robotics, and vision. So um, in my research, I'm uh, personally interested in machine learning, deep learning, generative learning, uh, expert systems, optimization. Uh, that's it. Okay. So let me introduce what is machine learning. Machine learning is an application of artificial intelligence that provides systems the ability to automatically learn and improve from experience without being explicitly programmed. It can be supervised and supervised or reinforcement. Uh, supervised algorithms are good for problems where each input data point is labeled or belongs to a category. The unsupervised learning are good for problems where each data is not labeled or does not belong to a category. These algorithms are good for clustering, grouping complex data into classes. And the reinforcement alg uh, algorithms are good for problems where future actions are based on outcome of current responses and next actions are required to be uh, forecasted. It's uh, like playing a game. So uh, here, uh, a description or explanation of the typical ML process. So um, given a certain number of raw data, the first step is pre-processing step based on data pre-processing tools. And this process is iterated until we obtain structured data. The next step is, uh, is um, choosing a learning algorithm, an adequate learning algorithm. And this uh, algorithm is going to be uh, tested uh, and uh, iterated until we get the best model. And uh, once we have the best model, it will be applied on um, uh, real world applications. So uh, now I'm going to introduce the deep learning uh, as I'm interested in deep learning in this presentation. Uh, deep learning is part of neural networks, which is part of machine learning, which is part of artificial intelligence. So what is, it, what, what is the importance of deep learning here? So if you have a large amount of data, deep learning gives better performance compared to older learning algorithms. So if we have challenges such as big data, big compute, architecture search, interpretability, deep learning gives many uh, advantages such as feature engineering free, more accurate model and, fast, and faster models. Here, a uh, compact uh, study between machine learning and deep learning. So as you can see here, feature extraction is part of deep learning, while it is not in machine learning. And uh, with a simple neural network, we have only one hidden layer. With deep learning neural network, we have multi-hidden uh, um, multi layers, uh, which means that uh, in case of big data, uh, they, gives, they give um, very uh, good results compared to simple uh, or traditional uh, machine learning algorithms. Now, uh, let me um, um, introduce the different classification of deep learning algorithms. So deep learning model can be discriminative models, representative model, generative models, and hybrid models. So as you can see here, generative learning is part of deep learning uh, models. For each class, uh, there is a um, certain number of algorithms. I'm going to explain uh, each class uh, in the next slide, but let me uh, here uh, give you some examples of algorithm for uh, the discriminative models. We have the MLP, the multi-layer perception algorithm, the recurrent neural network, the convolutional neural network. For the generative model, uh, the, uh, the most known algorithms are um, the um, virtual autoencoder and the generative adversarial network. 
So what is discriminative representative and generative and hybrid algorithm? Let me explain this. Discriminative algorithm focuses on learning the decision boundary between classes based on giving input features. And the representative uh, algorithm learns a compressed representation of the input data with the goal of reconstructing the input. The generative learning are models, uh, build models, um, uh, the, that uh, represents the underlying probability distribution of the input data and generates new samples. So uh, this is uh, the importance of generative uh, learning algorithms and the hybrid ones combines elements of both discriminative and generative models to leverage their strength. Uh, among uh, examples for hybrid algorithms are the semi-supervised learning and adversarial uh, autoencoders. So I'm going to explain um, uh, the semi-supervised learning in my contribution. Here I'm going to introduce the fuzzy logic because the fuzzy logic uh, is uh, used with hybridization with the machine learning algorithm in general. Uh, what is the fuzzy logic? It deals with reasoning that is approximate rather than fixed and exact. In contrast to traditional logic theory where binary sets have two valid logic, true or false, fuzzy logic variables may have a truth value that ranges in degrees between zero and one. So fuzzy logic has been extended to handle the concept of partial truth where the truth value may range between completely true and completely false. So this is important uh, um, feature of uh, fuzzy logic uh, used in hybridization, as I said, with machine learning algorithms. And the expert system also is part of AI that has been used in my contribution. It is a computer program that it is designed to solve complex problems and to provide decision-making ability like a human expert. We use the, decision, the expert system in order to uh, provide recommendations how to stop uh, the attacks. It performs this by extracting knowledge from its knowledge base using the reasoning and inference rules according to the user query. So uh, first step in the expert system is to build a knowledge base based on the knowledge from an expert and then uh, rules are extracted. And based on these rules, we can, uh, the system, the expert system can provide, uh, can provide recommendations. So uh, as we uh, have used uh, cloud for the st for storage, for our data storage, uh, we made uh, con conduct a comparative study between cloud providers. So as you can see here, Gartner Magic Quadrant Research 2019 shows that Amazon Web Service and uh, Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud Platform are dominating in the cloud industry. Each uh, provider has its advantages and its limits. For example, for Amazon Web Service, it's more mature and present in the market, provides a computing capacity larger than other providers, but it is high cost compared to the other uh, providers. The Google Cloud Platform is low cost for both processing and storage and full access to Google products, but lack of services and relatively new and still in development. The Microsoft Azure Cloud uh, has data centers in more than 54 regions, more than 200 services, low cost for both processing and storage. And it has its uh, the best digest, the disaster recovery system. So uh, in our contribution, we opted for this um, uh, provider, Microsoft Azure Cloud, in order to store our uh, data. Here also uh, compared the study between big data framework as I, uh, I used uh, big data tools in order to, pro to process uh, the data. Uh, if I say process data it means eliminate, eliminating redundancies, uh, normalizing data, etc, uh, fulfilling missing values, etc. So uh, here uh, I have um, uh, cited here the, the most popular uh, big data frameworks, uh, Apache Link, Apache, Spork, uh, Apache Storm, and Apache uh, Spark. As you can see here, um, if you consider single core throughput on community edition, uh, we note that Spark is uh, one and a half uh, more uh, um, uh, higher than the other uh, framework, uh, than the other framework. And uh, if you consider 40 core throughput on uh, 10 worker uh, nodes, Spark also uh, it's, uh, has a higher uh, speed, uh, 2. Uh, multipli multiplied by 2.5, so uh, 2.9. So it is uh, highly um, uh, more uh, more um, efficient than the other uh, framework. So uh, for Apache Flink, for example, it is hybrid. It supports languages are Java, Python, Scala, and R, low latency, exactly once processing. Apache Storm it supported languages are Java and Clojure. Pure stream processing, at least once processing. Apache Spark, it is hybrid. It is supported languages are Java, Python, Scala, and R. Low latency, interactive queries, 
uh, exactly once processing. Uh, it has the streaming application, stream to stream join, and it has and it comes with its own machine learning library, which is a Nail Spark. So here, uh, one of my contributions in this field, uh, the latest one, which is uh, called uh, entitled Deep Learning Based Intrusion Detection Approach for Mobile Ad Hoc Networks, which has been published in Journal of Soft Computing uh, 2023. Um, first of all, this is the architecture of uh, our contribution. Uh, the proposed approach uh, enhances intrusion detection system for mobile ad hoc networks using deep neural networks. So it includes data collection, attack, attack signatures, um, semi-supervised or generative learning based on semi-supervised learning, and attack uh, classification. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, all of these uh, steps in the next slide. So data collection, uh, IDS nodes are deployed in a pro uh, promiscuous mode to collect routing packets and gather data for, for training. The second step, uh, which is attack signature generation, it establishes a collection of signatures to represent both normal and abnormal behaviors. The files are then stored in Azure Blob Storage using hot access mode and replicated across multiple regions. The generative learning here, uh, based on semi-supervised learning, consists in combining labeled and unlabeled data. We have spoken before about the labeled data and unlabeled. We said that labeled data is supervised and labeled data is unsupervised learning. But if you combine uh, these two data, which is the case here, which is the case in uh, most of real uh, world examples, uh, we call this semi-supervised learning and it is a part of the generative learning which is the, the topic of our presentation today. So self-training uh, here process based on an algorithm, packet autoencoder algorithm, to assign labels to unlabeled data. And then it, 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 and then it generates labeled data. So at the end, uh, we have, so we have labeled and unlabeled data set. The algorithm, uh, the generative algorithm, uh, assign labels to the unlabeled data set. And at the end, uh, we have, uh, we can have uh, a labeled data set that we can uh, exploit uh, for uh, classification, for attack classification, which is the final step here. So based on DNN, the deep neural network algorithm, uh, we classify attack. Uh, it consists of input, hidden, and output layers with normalization and traffic image conversion performed on the input data. So as you can see here, we have uh, the loss and the accuracy curve of the uh, approach of the contribution. The loss curve diminishes and then stagnates, uh, means that the model has learned and optimized its parameter to a certain extent. And the accuracy curve increases and then stagnates, means that the model has learned to correctly classify the training data up to a certain level of performance. So if you can see here the, the accuracy, which means the detection rate uh, of, um, uh, of uh, all the attacks, of our data attacks, uh, the sensitivity, the specificity, um, the positive um, uh, alarm and the negative alarms, uh, we can see here that the model demonstrates effective detection capabilities for normal, uh, black hole and gray hole and uh, flooding uh, attacks. Uh, as you can see here, uh, uh, the, the results are very uh, encouraging. But uh, for uh, the uh, warm hole attack, uh, further improvements are needed for detecting the specific kind of uh, attacks. But in, um, in general, uh, our contribution gives uh, very good results compared to other uh, contributions which have used um, uh, supervised learning or unsupervised learning without generative learning. So you can see here the impact of the generative learning in uh, our results. So here, uh, just an idea about the Azure Hedge Insight cluster setup that uh, we have used. It's composed of two head nodes and two worker nodes. Uh, each node has its own characteristic based on uh, the CPU, memory, storage, operating system, and cost. And uh, the Spark evaluation metrics here, uh, the, it described how many events were loaded per second and how many events were uh, processed per second. Uh, as you know here, the, 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 resp the response time of uh, the system is very important, especially in cybersecurity context. So uh, this uh, our approach based on generative learning gives good results in terms of uh, accuracy. Uh, here are some ideas that can be developed. 
a fuzzy generative learning approach. We, we, I, I talked about the fuzzy logic in hybridization with machine learning. So we can uh, use here in, in order to take into account uncertainties in uh, data. Uh, the, second, uh, the second idea is streaming process and data fusion in the cloud. So uh, treating uh, uh, data in streaming. This is also um, uh, another uh, idea that can be um, um, treated and recommend the system to provide the necessary uh, recommendation based on expert system uh, to detect the inclusion. Here we are talking about the active IDS, which is capable to provide recommendations. So that's uh, all. Thank you. Thank you so much for your um, attention. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate. Yes. Farha. Yes. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Yes. Can I ask some people? Sorry. Yes, yes, yes. Thank so, you. Uh, yes. Yeah, my question was, and it's very much like for cybersecurity. Now, what is going to happen? We are going to see much more attacks that are going to happen, right? It is easier mm -hmm. for people now to become hackers. To be honest. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, I, what I see, and personally, I'm saying is, is cybersecurity is going to be also one of the concerns as our Yasin speaker also mentioned earlier on. And how do you mm -hmm. think that, is there already a report that has started telling that the increase has started becoming more and more, uh, the types of attacks that are happening and the quantity, is there any, uh, and what are your thoughts on that? If there is any data like this and do you feel as a cyber security expert that it is going to be much more uh, than before these type of attacks and you have to be more prepared uh, than before for these, this particular uh, wave that is going on right now. Yes, yes. So thank you. Thank you for the question. Very, very interesting question. So as you can, uh, as, as I, as um, I, uh, uh, previous researchers uh, said about AI, AI, it has advantages and it has a drawback. So as you can see here, it is easier now to, um, with ChatGPT and others, uh, to write a code uh, about hacking of hacking uh, systems, so it is it is easier. But also the AI provides us tools that uh, allows us to um, to stop these attacks and to detect and predict these attacks. So um, uh, with machine learning, we have, as I said, the supervised and the unsupervised learning. Supervised when I have label data, data with, with labels, so I apply the uh, supervised learning. If I have an unlabeled data set, which means that data without uh, unlabeled, without uh, labels, we apply the unlabeled. But with the generative um, learning here, we have this, um, this option to, to have, to, uh, to mimic the real world examples, which is I have alerts, I have data, which is labeled and unlabeled, and unlabeled in the same data set. So uh, what kind of algorithm uh, should I, uh, should I uh, use here? So in my previous work, works, when I have a labeled data set, I use the supervised learning algorithm. When I have an unlabeled data set, I use uh, an unsupervised learning algorithm. But the real world is, it's, it's a match of labeled and unlabeled uh, data. So here with generative learning, we have this uh, options that we can generate new models. So the unlabeled data can be labeled, okay? And then it can be exploitable to uh, detect intrusion and predict intrusion. So I prefer look at the, uh, the, the, the problem from this side, from this uh, positive side, okay? And uh, of course, uh, we should be uh, vigilant and uh, take an eye of, uh, to, to all what, uh, what is happening. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Farah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Yeah, hi. It's Sanjay here. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Hi there. Sorry, joining late. So I might miss, I might, I might have missed the early 35 minutes. Sorry about that. But what mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, where else do you see uh, generative AI being used? I mean, how do you see it being used in the marketing and the e-commerce field? Uh, okay, well, I, I, I have uh, the idea, my expertise in, in cybersecurity world. Oh, right. Okay, okay. So economic is out of scope, <laughs> but in cybersecurity, as I said uh, to, um, before, it's, it's 
so it allows me to mimic the real world uh, problems. Okay, as I said, uh, in the real world, I have data that are uh, label that are uh, comprehensible and data that it is not unlabeled. So with the generative models, I can generate labels for this data. Okay, and then it becomes more uh, and, and uh, more uh, comprehensible and more exploitable to in, in order to uh, detect the intrusions. So this is uh, in cybersecurity context, generative algorithms are, are very benefit for the intrusion and uh, compared to previous work that I uh, have done, uh, the use of generative uh, algorithms have um, fulfilled very good results compared to the previous work. So that's, uh, uh, that is, um, uh, this explains uh, why this is important for the cybersecurity context. For the economic and finance, I, I, I think that my colleagues have, uh, have spoke about this and uh, Right. Okay. I'll, I'll catch thank up. You. Sorry about that. Thank you. Okay, Thanks thank you. Lot. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Likewise. I think we have one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, Petru, uh, you can ask the question. Yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I have Hi. Farah one question related to yes? the false positive. Uh, yes. We have great uh, results with the degenerative models, but what mm -hmm. about the amount of false positives in prevention? Maybe in a large scale environment, we get to the point where the AI will block more than we want to, and we put uh, this risk to uh, critical operations, mm -hmm. for example, in health. Uh, which is which is the amount of risk and uh, most more important how we can prevent and diminish this, this level of risk of false positive? Yes, yes, very good question. Yes, uh, you know, uh, false positive is uh, when uh, AI um, uh, say that it is an attack, but it is not an attack, and that and that it it is a, a problem. But compared to the false negative it's still a, 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 pro, a minor problem. But in general, uh, this, um, this problem, it has to do with uh, the, the nature of the data. So uh, if the data is not biased, if the, 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 there is no missing values in the data, there is no redundancies. So here we can, uh, the model can give uh, better results in terms of false positive or false uh, negative. So uh, the, the main issue here is to uh, prepare uh, uh, good data for uh, to be trained by uh, the model. So uh, as I say here, the pre-processing uh, step in every uh, machine learning process is a very important step. Uh, as shown in the previous uh, slide, how the ML um, workflow. So the, 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 uh, according to my knowledge, 60% uh, of data scientists accord uh, importance to the pre-processing step more than uh, training step, which means that if we prepare our data by selecting the important features, by removing redundancies, by fulfill, fulfill, fulfilling uh, the missing data, then uh, the model will be trained on a clean data set and then results uh, become uh, very good results. So this is a step that you should uh, fo should focus on before the training. So it's not it, it doesn't depend on, only on the training uh, model. So that's it. If I ask you a question, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So that marks the end of our questions. So thank you so much, thank Farah, you. for joining Thank you for the invitation. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you. for your valuable insights. Thank you. Thank you.